Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Jansen and I'm a member of the Cool Worlds group here at Columbia University. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about phase curves, which are not to be confused with light curves, which refer to the amount of light coming from a planet and its star as a function of time, seconds or hours, where a phase curve of an exoplanet is the amount of reflected light and emitted light from a planet as a function of its phase. So you're probably more familiar with phases of the moon. New moon, crescent, quarter, gibbous, full. If we were to construct a phase curve of the moon from new to full, we would see that the amount of light increases. Well, we can do the same thing with an exoplanet. So as we watch an exoplanet go around its star, we are essentially watching it go through its phases. For example, when the planet goes between us and its star, we are seeing the planet at new phase. And if we were able to see it, when the planet goes behind the star, we would see it at full phase. To construct a phase curve of an exoplanet, we need to first know its orbital period. Once we know that, we can take the full light curve and fold it on top of each other according to its orbital period. Now, if the planet is massive enough, there can be other effects. One of these effects is called ellipsoidal variations. Because the planet has mass, it gravitationally interacts with its star. If it's massive enough, it can tidally distort the shape of the star from a sphere to an ellipsoid. As we watch a planet orbit its star, when the planet becomes between us and the star, the star appears to be a sphere. But when the planet is in quarter phase, then we're seeing the star from side on view. So we would see the star as an ellipsoid. And as an ellipsoid, it appears to be bigger. And since it appears to be bigger, it appears to be brighter. So in one full orbit of the planet, we would see two of these brightening effects. The minimum would occur when the planet's at new phase and at full phase, since that's when the star appears to be a sphere, and two brightening effects at the two quarter phases. Another one of these mass effects is due to Doppler beaming. This is an effect of special relativity, where the light rays get focused in the direction of an object's motion. So as you may know, it's not so much that a planet orbits the star as it is that the star and the planet both orbit the center of mass. Usually the star is massive enough that the center of mass is really inside of the star. So when the star is moving towards us, its light rays get beamed towards us like a lighthouse. And this lighthouse effect, much like an actual lighthouse, makes the star appear to be brighter. If a planet is massive enough to produce these effects, uh, ellipsoidal variations and Doppler beaming, a planet doesn't even need to transit in order for us to detect it. If the planet is not too massive, these effects won't be detectable, and all you may be able to see is the phase curve of the planet itself. So why would we want to detect a planet's phase curve? Knowing how much light gets reflected off of a planet gives us a tiny little glimpse at the atmospheric or surface composition of the planet. Assuming that all of the phase curve signal is from reflection and none from thermal emission, we can measure the planet's highest possible albedo from the amplitude of the phase curve. So the simplest way to think about albedo is as the fraction of starlight that gets reflected off of the planet. So an albedo of zero means that none of the light gets reflected, it all gets absorbed. And an albedo of one means that all of the light gets reflected and none of it is absorbed absorbed. Different materials have different reflectivities. As a fun fact, the open ocean is not as reflective as you might think. In fact, it has almost the same albedo as freshly paved asphalt, and it's apparently four times less reflective than grass. So by measuring the albedo of an exoplanet, we can make a conjecture about what its surface or atmosphere is made out of. If we were to measure a high albedo, it's more likely to have a lot of cloud coverage or be covered in an ice sheet than it is to be just a totally rocky surface, which would have a low albedo. Even the shape of a phase curve can tell us whether we're looking at a planet with a homogeneous surface or a planet with patchy clouds. For example, with a planet with a concentration of clouds on one side of the substellar longitude, the planet would appear to be brighter just before the secondary eclipse. We can even imagine constructing rudimentary maps of exoplanets using the information we get from phase curves. So like where the hot spots are on the planet or where clouds are concentrated. And if you think about mapping planets that are hundreds of light years away, Pretty amazing. Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.
You can. <laughs> oh, it's killing me. Oh, now my hair's all crazy. Oh my goodness. How long has it been like that? Mm. 